welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, we're going to look at the work of Oasmia, a specialist Swedish pharmaceutical company focusing on hard to treat cancers. And with me is their CEO, Dr. Francois Martelet. Francois, hello. Hello, thank you, Vivienne. Good morning. So first of all, tell me a bit about Oasmia and what it's going through at the moment, because you're recently joined, relatively recently, and you're undergoing a real transformation. Yes, for sure. So as you said rightly, you know, OASBI is a global oncology biotech company headquartered in Stockholm, Sweden. We are listed on the NASDAQ Nordic Stock Exchange. We have two lines of business, one R&D line and one commercial line. We have been able to uh, do a major transformation of the company since I joined about 18 months ago. We plan, we have this vision to become a Nordic oncology powerhouse focused on how to treat and late stage cancers. So now let me tell you a little bit about uh, uh, the transformation process. Where are we? We've been able to build very strong capabilities from a personal standpoint, management board. We've been able to reduce significantly our business risk. We've been able to reduce our burn rate. We've been able to make a number of savings. We've been able to eliminate a number of liabilities that the old OASMIA had before. We've been able also to help and support our partner, Eleva in the US, that is our commercial partner for our lead product that has been approved in Europe, Apelia, Paclid Axel Missler. We've been able to support the transition from OASMIA to Eleva. At the same time, we've been able to continue developing our pipeline internally. So this is what we have been doing over the last 18 months. So a lot going on there. Now, Apelia, yeah. as you've said, is uh, launching into the European market. It's a significant milestone for the company. Uh, what should we expect uh, from it? And uh, how are you going to commercialize it? Yes, so 2022 is really the year of launch of Apelia in Europe. And uh, it has been approved in Europe for late stage ovarian cancer patients, one of the most prominent cancer in women uh, in Europe. We believe that Apelia does provide a great therapeutic options for physicians and for patients as well. What is Apelia? Apelia is Paclitaxel micellar. Paclitaxel, you know, it's one of the most famous drugs used in oncology in the world. And we provide a new version a new formulation that is much less toxic, that avoids all the solvents that are responsible for a number of side effects of Paclitaxel in women. In particular, I have to insist on the fact that using Paclitaxel micellar, you don't need to use corticoids. We all know that corticotherapy does add to the immunodepression of patients. So that's really a plus. At the same time, uh, while administrating uh, Apelia, you can do it with a shorter infusion time. Shorter infusion times means more patients will be able to be treated in one single day in an outpatient basis. So Apelia will be launched in Europe, first in the UK and Germany, followed by Spain and Italy. Uh, so this is a sequential launch. Obviously, we need to be careful with regard to pricing and reimbursement. That's the reason why our partner has decided to do so. So we expect fundamentally to receive the first royalties uh, in 2022. Now, you've got a, a very interesting strategy, which you call your string of pearls strategy. Tell me a bit more about that and uh, what you're doing with it to build a diversified oncology portfolio. Yes. So, you know, if you want to become a sustainable biotech company, you need to have a critical mass. That's fairly obvious in our sector. To do so, you need to build a diversified pipeline. If you don't have any diversified pipeline or if you are just a one trick pony, then your level of risk is much higher. So that's the reason why 
I uh, absolutely wanted to uh, to do uh, to embark on a uh, on a string of pearl strategy, which means adding compounds through global licensing in and or M and A as well. Over the past eighteen months, we have been conducted about eight full due diligences on oncology companies and all compounds in the Nordic area. And we've been able to uh, uh, initiate that process by successfully licensing in Cantrixil, which is a small molecule, also in ovarian cancer, the different mode of administration, and I will come back to that a bit later on. But the goal is really to build a Nordic oncology powerhouse with a diversified pipeline using different mechanism of actions in order to fundamentally reduce the business risk linked to the development of such compounds. Can I take you back to Cantrixil? Um, <clears throat> can you provide an update on its development and what's happening uh, next? And also uh, give us an update on your other clinical asset, dose attacks on micellar. Yes, absolutely. So Contrexil, we are extremely excited about this compound. Um, and I will mention immediately the reason why, because we believe it is a pipeline within a molecule. We have uh, uh, expressed on the surface of the cells, CD44+, plus, also cells not only in ovarian, but also bladder cells and mesothelioma. So down the road, we could potentially develop that compound in additional indications as well. But let's come back where we are. So Contrixil has been reported uh, uh, phase 1B data. Uh, we're licensing in this compound from Kasia Therapeutics, a biotech company based in Australia. They have reported phase 1B uh, positive data in uh, the, one of the last uh, AACR Congress. That was further published in the uh, Cancer Journal. And we are now obviously embarking on a phase two, preparing for the phase two, that will be 2022. That means uh, we have already built a global oncology advisory board consisting of most of the experts in ovarian cancer in order to make sure that we can design uh, a clinical um, strategy for the, for the product. At the same time, we are planning to go to a number of regulatory bodies in order to validate the design of the trial, uh, FDA, uh, EMA as well. And above all, we are working on the manufacturing piece because for Contrixit, it's a little bit complicated. It's a, a, a rather complex process involving different manufacturers. So that's the reason why we will be starting the phase two in 23, and unfortunately not before. Docetaxel micella, very exciting compound. It is also a new formulation of Docetaxel, very well known as Taxotere. And uh, this is in metastatic uh, castration resistant prostate cancer. The amazing thing for this compound is that we have been approached actually by uh, the SAC group. SAC is a, the Swiss Cancer Research Group, and uh, we've been approached by them in order to initiate a, a trial, which is quite uh, uh, uncommon in our industry, especially for our company of our size. So the phase 1B is ongoing. Um, and we are using, as I said, uh, docetaxel micellar, which is uh, docetaxel enhanced with our solubility platform from a solubility perspective. And uh, we expect that SAC will uh, complete the enrollment of the phase 1B by the end of this year. So this is where we are with our, with our emerging pipeline. So you've had a transformative 18 months. Uh, and you're now looking forward to what sounds as if it's going to be a very exciting year. So can you just summarize for us and for investors what particular points they should be looking out for over the next uh, 12 months? Yeah, certainly. So 2022 will be the year of delivery with a, new, with a number of significant achievements. 
Well, first of all, we have uh, the launch of Apidia in uh, the first launches of Apidia in Europe, and therefore the first uh, uh, royalties to come uh, out of those uh, launches. Two, um, we expect also our partner Elevar in the US to bring additional partner in some of the parts of the world, such as China. And then we are really aiming at uh, continuing our string of pearl strategy, aiming at executing it. And um, that's obviously one uh, significant part of our strategy. Then we, um, uh, there is Cantrixil phase two you know, preparation. We call that the readiness state. Um, there is this uh, uh, Docetaxel missile phase 1B. At the same time, uh, we are also working with Kaolinska Institute, so, you know, this uh, famous um, uh, institution in, uh, in Europe, in order to really go to the next generation of our platform enhancing solubility. And uh, we hope to be able to deliver a number of results in 2022 as well. So there is a lot going on in uh, Atoasmia in 2022. We, we, have, uh, we are confident to be able to deliver value uh, and even more value in 2022 to our shareholders, um, because of course, without them, we will not be able to achieve that vision. Well, thank you very much, Francois. It sounds to me like you've got several strings of pearls <laughs> to, <laughs> coming up in the, in the uh, next 12 months. So thank you so much for talking to us. It's been very much appreciated. You're welcome. Thank you as well.